What happened to the lost civilization on Skull Island? Where are the people that once thrived there? Could it have been disease, corruption, war? What was it that caused nature to reclaim the land and seemingly wipe all traces of mankind off the face of the island? And how does Kong fit into all of it? We'll discuss all that here. But first, don't forget to check out our merch store over on Teespring, where we just released a brand new line of Dangerville apparel, which should set you guys up for the cold winter ahead. Right, let's get to it. I'm Alistair, and welcome to Dangerville. Skull Island is a host to a variety of dangerous creatures, the Vastatosaurus Rex, Photodon, Piranodon, and much more. Obviously, the land is too dangerous for people to explore the island without being chomped into little bits. But what if I was to tell you there was once a grand civilization that thrived in harmony on the island? A people that constructed great buildings, had social order, and were balanced with the creatures of the island. To find out about these people, we have to go way back to the very creation of Skull Island itself. Skull Island was once a part of a greater landmass, ancient Gondwana land. This is the name given to the southern half of the Pangaean supercontinent that existed approximately 300 million years ago, consisting of the major continental blocks of South America, Africa, Arabia, Madagascar, Antarctica, Australia, and more. Skull Island sat near the turbulent boundary of the Indo-Australian and Eurasian tectonic plates. Major earthquakes and volcanic activity caused this land to fracture, leading to the creation of the island we now know. The volcanic activity even paved the way to the lush forest environment, as once the lava flow cools, it can form new land with rich soil. 3,000 years ago, ancient Melanesian colonists traveled to Skull Island to thrive on its rich jungle soil and shores plentiful with schools of fish which allowed them to plant food, craft structures out of wood, and stay fed and happy. Over the course of hundreds of years, they became a highly advanced civilization, carving entire cities out of stone and forming a complex social structure, like what we see in our own civilizations today. They even created medicines out of the prehistoric plant life that grew plentiful on the island plant life which has now been lost to time and will never be recovered. They use these to treat even the most complex of diseases that we cannot cure today. The mighty giant wall we witness in King Kong once circled the entire island, acting as a border to keep invaders that carried potentially new diseases from getting in, but also anything from escaping. And in this wall would have been a living and breathing city, with thousands of people living in peace. It became a haven for the people that wanted to live by their own laws, isolated from the rest of the world. It's very likely that the natives actually brought established cultures and traditions, as well as social beliefs and religion, to Skull Island, which is evidenced by the great carved statues and shards of magnificent pottery left behind. But we know this civilization was able to thrive and grow as a people, but there's one big problem that stands out. Skull Island is filled to the brim with giant beasts. Prehistoric monsters, relics from another era, left to evolve in seclusion over the course of millions of years. So how were they able to survive? Well, from what we've been able to gather, there's a variety of factors that lead us to believe that they were able to survive. One being that their culture was much more based around embracing nature instead of destroying it. They carved their structures from the rock that was plentiful on the island, without strictly damaging the surrounding wildlife. They were very careful about how they went about exploring the island and had strict rules put in place as to not disturb the potentially dangerous organisms. Though another theory is that the colonists brought the giant ancestors of Kong species to Skull Island, and they coexisted together. With their devoted culture being based around worshipping these giant apes that protected them, coexistence isn't actually unusual in nature. In fact, it's quite common, and it certainly wouldn't be unusual between two species of great ape as long as they benefited each other. And as seen in King Kong, sacrifice may have been a large part of that, offering up gifts of human sacrifices to their appointed gods, to appease them as trade for protection. 
So by building a unique symbiosis with this all-powerful species, they were able to overcome all obstacles on the island. With this unique bond, they were able to grow to a population of thousands. So what happened to the civilization? Why did we only see remnants of their once grand culture? How did they seemingly disappear? At least a thousand years ago, they were, for the most part, wiped out, as they highly underestimated the viability of Kong species being able to protect them on the island from the giant carnivorous beasts. For thousands of years, they protected the natives, and in Southeast Asia, where they previously came from, Kong species were king. They were the top of the food chain and faced no competitors. But Skull Island, on the other hand, was very different. There were monsters that met and even outmatched Kong species. And one by one, as each member of Kong species were killed in battle, the native society became weaker and weaker, and the supports began to decline. The regions of Skull Island that were previously deemed safe were no longer viable, and the natives began to retreat back to the shores and the outskirts of the wall. Food and medicine became scarce, and their population declined significantly. Their ordered society crumbled, and over the course of hundreds of years, they turned to savagery and became almost entirely disconnected from their ancestors, a hollow shell of their once great, rich culture. We've seen events similar to this with the Aztecs, a civilization that flourished in central Mexico. Once a thriving people, they would, like the natives of Skull Island, also offer sacrifices to please their gods. Like the hummingbird of the south, the principal Aztec god known as the patron of war and sun. Once a thriving and advanced culture, they were wiped out by disease brought by European colonization hundreds of years ago. And the only thing that remains are the stone remnants of their once bustling city. But unlike the Aztecs, who spread out and adapted to changing environments, the natives of Skull Island could not. The island only became smaller and smaller as the crashing seas only chipped away at the rock and the predators became more prominent on the land as they were forced to reside closer and closer to each other. Without proper ordered society, the fishing boats fell into a state of disrepair and famine spread like a plague. They turned to cannibalism, which only weakened their already dwindling numbers, which have fallen to a mere few hundred. In the past, the natives carved skulls out of stone as a way to appease their gods, Kong species. The sight of skulls reminded them of the sacrificial rituals and was a way to tame them into recognizing patterns. But towards the end of the reign of man on Skull Island, the skulls began to represent something much more sinister, death to anyone that came near. In many cultures, skulls are actually a sign of celebration, especially in Mexican culture, and for the longest time, Skull Island would have been the same. But as the end of their civilization drew closer, the skulls changed from a sign of celebration for their gods to becoming a warning. Around the time Denham's team arrived on the island, the natives were already on their last legs, almost completely abandoned of any social construct outside of their sacrificial ceremony for their last remaining god. King Kong. And in 1948, Skull Island actually sank into the ocean below, following a devastating earthquake that reached 9.2 on the Richter scale, destroying any trace of the prehistoric monsters, the bones of Kong species, and the ancient civilization. Perhaps the island sinking was for the better. After all, the secrets and the horrifying monsters would have only done more harm than good. But future research teams will be able to go back and inspect the underwater remains of the once great civilization, which is now a real-life Atlantis. It would have certainly been amazing to see this civilization at its prime being one of the leading centers for culture, medicine, and quality of life. But would you like to have seen them? Let us know in the comment section down below. I'd personally have loved to see their gigantic stone structures before Mother Nature claimed the land back as its own. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, then hit that like button because it helps spread this video to a wider audience. If you want to see more Kong, Godzilla, and Jurassic Park videos, then subscribe and stomp that notification button to become a resident of our lovely town of Dangerville today. I've been your mayor of Dangerville, Alistair, 
and we'll see you residents in the next one.